who's making the playoffs, who's winning the Super Bowl, YouTube Oz the Goal and the Goat House is back with my final predictions for the NFL season. It all starts next week. I'm pumped going through all my playoff predictions and my Super Bowl prediction in this video. We'll see if I can get back on that hot streak for my Super Bowl picks. Let's, let's just get into it. Starting with my AFC playoff predictions, going through the seven teams that I have making it. At one, I have the Kansas City Chiefs. Tough to go against them. Tough to go against that coaching staff. Patrick Mahomes, the best player in football. And their, their weak spot last year felt like receiver. It feels like they even got better at that spot this year. I think Travis Kelsey will be better. They had Worthy. They had Juju this morning. Yeah, they're dealing with some injuries, maybe a suspension, but these guys will be there uh, for most of the season, and especially in the playoffs, I have the Chiefs getting the one seed at two. I have the Houston Texans. That jump they made last year makes you think, what's that jump going to look like this year? They have a quarterback at CJ Stroud. He has a bunch of weapons as an offensive line. Added Stephon Diggs. Added Joe Mixon. That doesn't get talked about enough. Adding more of a legit running game, especially in the red zone on the goal line, which was maybe the weakness, the only weakness they had last year. Defensively, love D'Amico Ryans. Love the weapons they have. They add Daniel Hunter. They have already have Will Anderson, Derek Stingley, studs like that. Uh, only knock, only knock on paper, interior defensive line. I think they'll play better than how they look on paper because of D'Amico Ryans, because the players around him. They possibly could at any time could add at that spot as well, which could be big. Like the schedule overall for them to get around 12 wins, um, give or take, but I'm thinking, yeah, right around there to get that two seed. Three seed, I have the Bengals over the Ravens, which could, which could surprise some people, and the Browns could even win it, but... I broke it down a little more in my division winners video. It was somewhat recent, but love the schedule for the Bengals. Fairly easy, I would say. It's pretty easy, and they have a bunch of talent as well. Just have to stay healthy. Have to stay healthy because this is a very talented team. Only knock on them, too. You know, run defense, could they add at that spot? Uh, but I, I hopefully they stay healthy, and then they'll take advantage of the schedule. Have them at that three seed. Four seed, I do have the New York Jets all offseason leading up to the Matt Milano injury. I did have the Bills winning the AFC East, but I'm going to go with the Jets. I, I, you know, The Bills, I still wonder about the defense. The Jets, way better defense, obviously. Just half another team has to stay healthy, but you worry about the health with the Bills as well. Already Matt Milano going down, but I love the beginning part of the schedule for the Jets. I think there's a realistic shot. They start 7-1. and one. I mean, I can't rule out 8-0. No. Six and two, I feel like at the worst, I could be totally wrong there. But if you look at that schedule, I think you probably agree. Um, somewhere around that range of seven and one is very realistic. And then, of course, they can fall apart if they get injured after that. But I like their chances. A very complete roster. I got them go getting the four seed. It's just about staying healthy. Five seed, I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens, who very well could win their division and get a top seed like they did last year. They add Derrick Henry. It's going to be very difficult to stop him and Lamar in that running game. You can't just, it's not as simple as stacking the box and stopping that. You know, there's so many things, different things you have to watch. You have to worry about, because Henry's better than people think running outside. You have to worry about Lamar keeping the ball, any misdirection like that. Receivers got to step up outside of Zay Flowers. Offensive line, they kind of it kind of looks weaker this year, so that's kind of a worry for me. And they lost a bunch of of the coaching staff, but it's just it's just such a talented team, team led by star players. You know, especially on defense as well. Kyle Hamilton's only going to get better. Uh, just to highlight one guy, but other guys should be able to step up. Uh, the difference between them and the Bengals really is is the difference in schedule. I actually, even though there's only a few different opponents, I think it's pretty significant. Both these teams would be pretty big to stay healthy, but just get in the playoffs, and these teams can make some noise in the playoffs. Sixth seed, I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills. I did have them winning the AFC East until Matt Milano went down. That's how close everyone is. They still very well could do it. I think people knock them for their like losing digs and their receivers. I'm not that worried about it. Samuel needs to get healthy. Healthy, dealing with turf toe. Dalton Kincaid's going to be nuts, I think. And the running game actually should be a lot better, led by Josh Allen, but James Cook, Ray Davis, and these guys. Uh, offensive line hopefully gets uh, better. I, I'm not too worried about it. Defensively, Russo's a guy that's going to step up. Uh, there's a lot of young guys in that group. Uh, I think they made the right choices to get uh, better for the playoffs in the future, but there might be like growing pains there. They need Matt Milano. We saw that last year, but they could get him back at some point, maybe heading into the playoffs. Um, so we'll see. They're a little tricky. I, I did have them winning the division at one point, uh, but I had to make that slight change. We'll see what happens there. It's a battle. And picking that seven seed is extremely tough. I was originally going with the Jacksonville Jaguars because I actually believe in them. People are kind of doubting them a little bit. I believe in Trevor Lawrence. Uh, they have weapons, obviously. Defensively, I'm excited about their defense, what they're going to do with uh, Trayvon Walker in his breakout upcoming season. They add Ark Armstead. Ryan Nielsen's a really good defensive coach. 
Uh, and they already have a star player in Josh Allen. The, the linebackers really should step up as well, uh, like Devin Lloyd. So, ah, oh, man, I like the Jaguars. My gut was kind of telling them, telling me put them, uh, put them in. Uh, they could struggle at the start. It's a tough start of the schedule. If they play well during there, they can make it. It's just so tough not going, not putting the Dolphins in the playoffs because just so explosive on offense. Tua, it's just you see a pattern. He's getting better and better. He stayed healthy last year. I do worry about. It's been a common thing for him to get injury for that. So that could be what's stopping him. But the weapons, the explosiveness they have, the the trio at the running back position, defense. They have a list of pass rushers. They got better in the secondary. Issue is no Christian Wilkins, uh, but I do think they get better in terms of defensive coaching, but that's to be determined. Uh, other issues, offensive line. And every time I think about this offensive line, I take them out of the playoffs because it looks pretty bad on paper. I do think it could play better uh, than, than how it looks on paper. Mm, I was so back and forth with the Jags and the Dolphins. The Browns are worthy. It's a very complete roster. They were so inconsistent home and away. They had a little bit, you know, had a nice draw in terms of the schedule and the opponents they're playing in their situation at the end of last year. Is that going to happen again? When's Nick Chubb coming back? Uh, just a little predictable on defense, and they and so that kind of resulted in the defense kind of getting worse. Uh, you know, as the season went on, even though it was really good for a stretch, they got to run less man coverage because it got too predictable. Uh, but uh, those teams are for sure playoff worthy. It's just. I had the Jags the whole time, so if they make it, I'm going to be kind of kicking myself for changing that. But it's just that I look at the Dolphins and their weapons, and they're pretty damn good on both sides of the ball. And I think they'll start very hot, um, and it's extremely tough to play in Miami. I worry about the stretch of their schedule, down down the stretch. Uh, and then are they beat up at that point like last year? Uh, it's, it's it's so tough to pick the end there. Uh, so on to my wild card picks. I have the Chiefs have a bye. I have the Texans beating the Dolphins. And then I have some upsets in terms of seed seeding. I don't know what the line's going to be. But I do have the Bills beating the Bengals. And I was back and forth on that. Uh, it seemed like a bad matchup for the Bills in the past. I'll playoff game a couple years ago. But it's a little different now. I The Bills, who how healthy are either of these teams going to be at that point? The Bills should have Matt Milano unless he gets hurt again uh, at this point. How healthy will the Bengals be? Um the Bills, I think they're going to emphasize on running the ball more effective, just more and more effectively uh, with Josh Allen, James Cook. Ray Davis looks really good. Uh, and again, that a few years ago, the Bengals were stout stopping a run, and that could be their issue in a playoff atmosphere, in a playoff-like game or a playoff game, I should say. So I was leaning Bills on that one. Uh, Josh Allen, MVP candidate, you know, it could just be too much of a problem in that. And I'm going to go Ravens over Jets. The Ravens, could end up being the better team. The Jets on paper look a little more complete. I'm going to trust the Ravens a little more. How healthy will either team be once again? But a lot of teams, good teams with durability concerns, but how healthy will the Jets be looking at? I'm not really worried about Rodgers, not worried about Brees Hall, Mike Williams, offensive line, guys like that. But the defense should be really, it's going to be, be an absolute defensive game. I'm going to take the Ravens in that one. So we have two lower seeds winning. Then we go on to the next round. Take the Chiefs over the Bills. And I got the Texans in a rematch from the playoff game last year, second round. Uh, I will take the Texans over the Ravens this time. The Texans should be better. It looks like they – it feels – looks like they got better than they have by default. The young guy, C.J. Stroud, second-year coaching staff with this group that's very good. Um, they're going to get better. And the Ravens, they got to stay healthy. They might get better with Derrick Henry, but the offense line losing some guys in the coaching staff could are they worse? Kind of a question, not a, not a statement at this time of the year. So I have the Chiefs and the Texans going to the AFC Championship game, and that is a tough one to pick because the completeness of the Texans could make things interesting in in the the game plan and how good that defense is. Could you don't stop them, but you could slow down maybe Patrick Mahomes in the Chiefs, but. It's they're still kind of young, still, you know, in the Chiefs are the Chiefs. It's in the Patrick Mahomes finds a way at home in the AFC title game, probably in super cold weather. That's a deciding factor for me. If the Texans get home field advantage for this game, that could change some stuff. If they get that one seed, which they could, I, I would, that could change my pick right there. So um, I like to check the the Chiefs, the Texans, the Chiefs and the Texans making the AFC title game and I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs out of the AFC. Time for my NFC predictions. The seven teams that are going to make the playoffs and their seeds. I got the 49ers getting that one seed. 
Trent Williams still holding out as of right now. He's got to get back there, especially for week one against the Jets. So, I mean, just one game could decide what seed they get. I'd imagine they still make the playoffs, and Brandon Ayuk's situation is kind of getting old as well. I, obviously, they would be better with him. I, if he's out for a certain amount of time, it's not going to change my pick too much on them. Trent Williams is a bigger one, even though Ayuk is pretty big. But uh, I do have the Niners getting the one seed. What I'm looking for is Purdy get even better. And that is what's scary and why they could be that top team then. Uh, at the two seed, a battle in the NFC North. It is a, it's 50-50 for me. They're both juggernauts. I'm feeling the Packers this year. Where they got to at the end of last year, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Uh, I love the coaching staff. I love adding half lead. It's to be determined, but I think that's a really good hire in terms of defense, of a court, court defensive coordinator. Um, feels like they got better. They got better by default by Jordan Love getting better. All these young guys getting better. They get better on the offense line with Jordan Morgan. They get better at running back, even though I loved Aaron Jones. They get better at running back, fresher, more physical with uh, Josh Jacobs. Young receivers getting better. Got to stay healthy. Christian Watson could be special. He's got to stay healthy. Uh, defensively, they've always been talented on paper. It was A lot of it was defensive coaching and stopping the run. Run. I, I think they continue where they left left off, which was rapidly getting better and getting getting to a high level. So I'm going to go Green Bay, getting that two seed. Uh, all these seedings are so close in the NFC. It's like, man, you can flip any of these. The Falcons at the three seed, pretty favorable schedule. I wouldn't say super easy, but it's a pretty e- somewhat easier division. They get better at quarterback with Kirk Cousins, smart, accurate, finds open receivers. They have great receivers. Drake London's going to be a star. Darnell Mooney, Darnell Mooney's really good. He's just had really bad quarterbacks, and he's been open. They haven't seen him. Bijan's going to be a stud. Big thing, big thing. This is the best offense line that Kirk Cousins ever had. He's had bad offense lines. And fi- finally got a little better in Minnesota last year. They got He got injured, unfortunate. Uh, defensively, very well coached on defense. They have studs. Judon's got to stay healthy because that would make the weak point edge if he's not but that was a good addition on top of Justin Simmons as well playmakers in the back end uh if Kirk Cousins goes down I still think they make the playoffs with Penix I'd put them in that four seed though I think Penix could play well as a rookie even though that was a questionable pick at the same time and he'll have some hiccups if yeah I don't imagine Kirk getting hurt Uh, I don't know we'll see maybe he's affected by the injury we'll see uh four seed I got the Eagles their roster says better than the four seed but all these teams are so good uh, you know how would they? They were so bad at the end of last year, especially on defense, like specifically in the secondary, and specifically with coordinators with coaching. I think it's gonna be better this year. It cannot be anywhere near that bad. But is it gonna be like growing? You have do they have to progress towards that? You know, I still wonder about the secondary a little bit, but the pass rush should be pretty solid. Uh, you know, offense should be really tough to deal with. Adding Saquon Barkley, you know, hurts the great offense line. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, and company. Dallas Goddard, uh, they got talent. How will these coordinators be? They de- they badly missed their coordinators from the Super Bowl year last year. I think it's an upgrade this year based on last year. But I, could they still miss those guys? But it's a super talented team that team that should win their division, even though they have competition. Even though they have competition with the Cowboys, they should get a top four seed. Five seed, I got to go with the Lions. They're well, they're just, they can get the one seed. They're that good. Uh, they can win the, the NFC North very easily. Like I said, 50 50, two juggernauts. I, I'm very high on both those teams. Um, you know, Lions, where they got to last year. Do they take another step up this year or do they stay around the same? They're constantly developing, progressing guys, so could get better. Um, you know, some thought Jared Goff take a step back down last year. He's took a step up. So where does he go this year? So those are kind of things to watch. They dealt with minor injuries leading up to the season here, but, uh, nothing significant. So, uh, hopefully they, they stay fully healthy and it doesn't knock any guys out of the games here and there, but battle with the Packers just battle for, for going to the Super Bowl as well. Cause that's a, it's very possible with that, uh, very exciting team six seed. I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys. It does feel like they got a little worse on paper. Uh, but it's such a talented team. They right before recording this, they did extend uh, CD Lamb, so that obviously is big. How will the running game be? Will they add somebody? Uh, you know, right before the season starts, that's that's possible. But uh, they got a ta- they got talent everywhere. I know Bland's going to be out for a little bit, so that's tough. But uh, they're still super explosive. I'm curious how they're going to be going from a Dan Quinn defense to Mike Zimmer defense. I think it takes a step down at first, and I actually think it can climb up, and they might be a little less predictable because Dan Quinn's like man coverage, man coverage. So he is a great defensive coordinator, though. But I got the Cow- Cowboys is too talented to miss the playoffs. Uh, and seven, I'm going to go with the Rams and just missing the cut. And the Seahawks would be really sneaky. Bears, young, could be a little sneaky. And the Bucks got better and better last year. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Rams. Stafford played like, at a, you know, at a very high level last year, the running game was great. They add Corum, 
still Kyron Williams still a guy. They get better on the offense line if they're healthy. You know, if Stafford's healthy, it's another big if. Uh, but it's super, and they have McVay leading the way. It's super explosive offense with the receivers they have as well. Uh, defensively is kind of where I what I worry about. They lose Aaron Donald, but they do patch up some other spots. Now Ernest Jones, they're kind of dealing with something there. Um, they add young talent, guys that were young last year, played well. They'll continue to get better. How would they be without Aaron Donald? Uh, how healthy will the corners be? Uh, you know, some some questions there. But I think just too experienced, too explosive, too talented to miss the playoffs. But there could be some sneaky teams there from the NFC. Uh, on to the wild card round. I'm going to go Packers beat the Rams. Uh, I got the Falcons beat the Falcons and the Cowboys. I was back and forth on that. The Cowboys have more experience. They keep losing in the playoffs, but they have more experience. Falcons, a lot of new faces, new coaching staff. Will the chemistry be there? Uh, I can see Dak and Lamb having a day on that Falcons defense, even though I think the Falcons defense is good in the playoffs in a playoff type atmosphere. Uh, I actually can see that, but I also can see the Falcons having a day off. I think it actually could be a shootout. I think Bijan can have it. I think the Falcons are more talented at home. Tough to trust, trust the Cowboys in the playoffs. I was flip a coin on that one. You know, that's where I was at. Uh, home field, home team is what I was going with there on that one. Lions beat the Eagles. I think the Lions are a little better than them, but they are both deep, both very talented rosters, both physical. I'll take the Lions in that one, even away, even though it's a tough place to play. Uh, I just think the Lions are that good, and they're just too good to be a five seed. It feels like, but they got to deal with the Packers as well. They got to deal with each other. On in the divisional round, uh, Niners and Lions. It was fifty fifty again. Uh, San Francisco at home. I'm just trying to think what team will improve more off last year. And the Lions, young guys are continuing to improve, so they could be them. But, man, the jump that Purdy made, if he makes even a little bit more of a jump this year, that makes them significantly better, actually, the team. Uh, offense line was actually bad. People don't talk about that. It was actually bad. Like, they had problems. And I think it's got to be better this year as long as Trent Williams out there. But to get better at Pooney, I think it's got to be better. Not great. Uh, defense should be better. Uh, I, I thought it could have been better last year. So it was almost like... They had like more flaws than they had in the past last year. Not that they had major flaws, and they were still very, very good. Um, and they're getting better at quarterback right now, so they actually might improve a little more. And I'm gonna go Packers over Falcons. I don't, I don't question that one. I thought that was a pretty easy one. If it end up being the Cowboys or if they're playing the Lions, uh, Lions is a yeah. They'd rather see the Falcons or the Cowboys or whoever it may be in the second round. That could be tough. Packers Lions could be an absolute battle, but but the Packers. So NFC Championship game. One seed Niners, two seed Green Bay Packers rematch from the divisional round last year. I'm gonna go with the Green Bay Packers making the Super Bowl. Uh, it may, you know, maybe a little bold because they were pretty bad actually for a stretch of last year. But where they got to last year and how how good they played at the end and how you know, how, how well coached they were. Matt Lafleur is a very good coach. He out coach Shanahan against the Niners they outplayed the Niners for three quarters of the Lions outplayed the Niners for two Niners outplayed them for two either the Packers outplayed the Niners for most of that game just very unfortunate but they're still young still learning Jordan Love still getting better offense line getting better defense should be better just from coaching alone um, some of those guys could have career years on that defense they had some young talent as well um, it's just a battle it seems like Packers and Niners I, I like the way the Packers match up with them uh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Packers there in San Fran, going to the Super Bowl. So that means I have a Chiefs versus Packers Super Bowl. I think it'll be a fun game, an absolute battle. They played in a fun primetime game towards the end of last year too. But I think pretty even teams. I mean, they both have stud quarterbacks. Uh, they have you know I don't want to compare Mahomes and Jordan Love, but both crazy armed quarterbacks. Love has. You know, the potential to be a star very, very soon. Both pretty solid offensive lines. Uh, physical run game specifically. Now, neither team has like a legit number one receiver, but they have a bunch of number twos, a collection of guys. If they Whoever they put out there, they're going to, you know, get open. They're athletic. They're really good after the catch. You know, can get, get separation. Uh, both very well coached. Uh, I think they both will be very well coached on both sides of the ball, but spe specifically offensively, I think LaFleur is one of the best game planners, like uh, preparing his team in football. Andy Reid's kind of known as that guy right now. And then defensively, uh, they yeah they both have talent everywhere. I think pretty balanced uh, defenses. And the Packers have been more talented on paper versus how they've played. I think that changes this year. Uh, but the Chiefs, it feels like that defense is getting better and better. Uh, they just lost Snead this year, but it's so well coached, and they're finding way different ways to win. Uh, and the defense was a big, big reason they won the Super Bowl last year. On top of you know having that you know 
the best player in football, Patrick Mahomes. So uh, other teams I could see here, we kind of touched on it, but I look at the Texans. I, if The Bengals and the Bills, if they're healthy, I know there's some other really, really good teams. I think they have more of a ceiling, not that they can't make it here, but Bengals and Bills, if they're healthy, the Texans could be very sneaky. Uh, and then for the NFC, I look at the Niners. Uh, I was mainly, it's either going to be the Packers or Niners. The Lions are right there as well. And the Eagles, if they... You know, if the coordinators do a good job, much better than last year's group, and uh, the secondary figures out a little bit, that you're looking at that team on paper, they're and they're, a, you know, they're a sob to deal with, I, I would imagine as well. So those are the teams I kind of view from there. But I, this is, I'm a guy that goes with my gut a lot. Whenever I've I've rarely gone against my gut in past predictions, and I've regretted it when I did. And my predictions, when trusting my gut, have been pretty damn solid. So I'm trusting it, and it ends up being a little bold. I don't think it's that bold, but according to according to a lot of people, I am picking the Green Bay Packers in the Super Bowl. It's a feeling I've had for a long time this off season. I don't want to change my gut right now. I'm I'm aware, yeah, it, it is a little bold, mainly because. Because, you know, Jordan Love, is he still going to make mistakes? Is he still going to kind of be up and down? And uh, they have a new defensive coordinator. I think it's great. But, um, you know, that, that's really the question. You know, like, looking at last year, it's it, they were bad for a portion of last Like, early, right away, they were like, okay. And then it was like, eh, and then it was like, God, are they, is Love bad? I, not a statement, but are they bad? Uh, so that's kind of what scares me. But where they got to after that was ridiculous. They got better and better. And there was still some games, the Giants game popped up. That it does stick in my mind. It makes me, I don't like basing things off the previous year. but And I kind of do with the Packs a little bit because they got better and better. But it just shows me in, into the playoffs how good they got and just out game planning, out coaching, and using their young talent the best of their advantage on both sides of the ball. They got better. Quarterback got better. Um, you know, throughout the year, I thought they outplayed the Niners completely. They deserved to win that game. I th- I would like to think they would have won the next game. I think they match up well against the Lions. We saw the last time they played them before that, and they matched up well against the Chiefs as well. We saw that during last year. So there was a scenario where the Packers win the Super Bowl last year, which would have been pretty crazy because they barely snuck in. Um, you know, so that was pretty crazy. But and it just makes me think though, like this team has upside, and they're going to continue to get better. Jordan Love's going to continue to get better. Uh, again, I, I think the running game gets better under Josh Jacobs. They add Lloyd, who I was a huge fan of. Um, they have Dylan, you know, Jordan Morgan on the offensive line. And people knock them for not having a number one legit receiver. Well, I say Christian Watson could be that guy. He's that talented. He's just got to stay healthy. And Jaden Reed could be that guy. It kind of seemed like he was a gadget guy at first, but he you look at the end of last year, he developed into something else. And they have a bunch of guys that can – they have a bunch of number twos that can – I think Watson and Reed are number ones, but – they have a bunch like whoever they put out there are gonna is gonna help your team. They don't have they don't have a bad situation where put your best corner on that guy, slow him down a little bit, and the other guys we're not worried about. That's not the Packers, and that's a good thing. Uh, they have a duo of tight ends. Defensively, they're just always so talented on paper, and they played fairly well from time to time. It's just a little disappointing. I do blame you can't put blame on one thing, but the uh, defensive coaching in the past. I like Halfley, you know, having that college background, having the 49ers background. I think it's pretty big. I think they'll be mixing up their coverage a little bit more. They're going to be adding a little bit more man coverage, which is good, but not being predictable with it. I think Rashawn Gary could have a career year. Kenny Clark's already a stud. Um, does Van Ness step, step up? Does Wyatt step up? Carl Brooks looks pretty solid. Linebackers, Quay Walker should be getting better. Cooper's kind of a Swiss Army knife, and that could be used in clutch situations. The secondary looks really good to add. I think Alexander gets back on track like he was in the playoffs, like one of the star corners of the league. Xavier McKinney is who they add. He's a stud. They got to be healthy back there, though, because some guys get beat up here and there. Um, Christian Watson's got to be healthy. But overall, there's not a long list of injury concerns. I think they match up with the Chiefs pretty well. I think it'd be an absolute battle. Gut feeling, gut feeling tells me the Packers, but that could backfire in my face if they look more like the Packers from halfway through the season last year. That could really backfire, blow up right, backfire in my face. That's what I said, blow up in my face. Uh, so we will see if, uh, you know, how accurate these predictions are. I feel like they've been very, very accurate in the past. Last year I did pick the Bengals, so uh, last year was a little off, but they did get very beat up. But um, we'll, we'll see what happens this year i'm excited i'm excited for our in-season content start next week weekly picks and a lot more we have a lot of trade videos you know videos coming rookies that recently went up we're going to be covering the cut all the cut like the big cuts uh the signings trades anything that goes down like that on twitter and right here on the channel joins for all that that's gonna do it thanks everyone for watching goodbye